Welcome to Electra Online. Now that we learned in the previous videos how they figured out the distance to the moon, the distance to the sun, the size of the moon, the size of the sun, and the distance to the planets, and of course once they knew the distance to the planets and they could measure the what we would call the apparent size of the planets based upon the angle that the planets would subtend, they could also kind of figure out the size of the planets. So they were beginning to figure out pretty well how big our solar system was. But now they looked up to those points of light up there, the stars, and already back in the days of Copernicus when he came up with the conclusion that those stars were much, much, much farther away than the planets, they began to figure out, they began to wonder, well, how far are those stars? How can we find the distance to those stars? They really didn't have any idea what they were. They didn't realize at the time that those stars were just basically other suns like our own sun, just much farther away. But they still wanted to know how far those stars were. But how do you figure out the distance of things when you don't know what they are and they seem to be motionless in the sky? Well, it turned out as they began to uh, come up with better, bigger and better telescopes and they started looking at the brightest of the stars, some of them actually showed that they moved a little bit in position relative to the other stars um, at different times of the year. And let me explain what that is. So let's say that the Earth is over here relative to the Sun and they were training their telescopes in this direction looking at these stars right there. Now even though the two stars may be very close together as far as angle is concerned, um, they would have no way that star one may be a lot closer than star two. There's no way for them to tell. Maybe star one was brighter, but that doesn't mean it's closer because it could be brighter just because it's a very bright star and this could be dimmer just because it's a very dim star. It could also be because it's a closer star versus a farther star. They had no way of telling. So what happened though is that when they observed the very same stars, let's say three months later when the Earth had moved in a different position over here, again being one astronomical unit away, they would then look at the same two stars but notice now they would have a different position in the sky relative to each other and they would be able to measure this difference in the angle between seeing the star from this position and seeing the star from that position. They would be able to measure these angles right here. Those angles are called the angles of parallax by looking at the same object from two different positions and so you then have this different angle. Also notice that when the stars are closer, the angle of parallax would be bigger. If the stars are farther away, the angle of parallax would be smaller. And that would be the key to understanding how far these stars were. They, all would, they would have to do is observe the position of the stars at this time, the position of the stars at this time, then measure the angle of parallax, and then from that they would be able to calculate the distance to those stars understanding that the distance between the Earth and the Sun was 93 million miles. How did it do that? Well, it's that very same equation again. This distance right here, because you're seeing this is basically a triangle, so the distance of the base, small d, and then this distance right here called at large d, the ratio of that would be equal to the angle right here divided by the number of degrees in, in um, a radian. And so if we solve this equation for big D, which is what we're looking for, we're looking for the distance to the star, that would be equal to the distance between the Earth and the Sun, which is one astronomical unit, or 93 million miles. Then we have the number of degrees in a radian, and we divide that by the angle that we have measured. Now, of course, these angles are very, very small. For example, if the angle was exactly one arc second, which is one three thousand six hundred of a degree. Remember, there are 60 seconds in an arc minute and 60 arc minutes in a degree, so it would be 3,600 arc seconds in one degree. So we take one of those arc seconds as a measurement, we divide that into the distance between the Sun and the Earth, multiply that times 57.3, which is the number of degrees in a radian, and now pops course, if we do a little bit of a conversion, we end up with 3.26 light years, understanding that a light year is about 6 trillion miles. So it then ended up being about 20 trillion miles, which is about 3.26 light years. And so there came the unit then that if the angle is one arc second, the distance would be 3.26 light years. And so they came up with this new distance unit called the parsec. Now where does parsec come from? Well, par comes from the angle of parallax and seconds comes from the unit arc second. So when they put those two together, one parc sec, so we have a distance of um, the angle of parallax when the angle is one 
arc second, the distance therefore is one parsec and therefore 3.26 light years. Now it turns out there are no stars that are actually that close to us. The closest star is about four and a half light years. So the biggest angle to the closest star would actually be less than a part seconds. And it's very difficult with a telescope to measure those very small angles. So they have had some pretty good quality telescopes at the time to be able to do that. But it turned out that in recent uh, modern history, so for example 100 years ago or so, they were beginning to able to take angle measurements as small as one-fifth of an arc second, which meant that they could start measuring distances to stars as far away as about five parsecs or about 16 light years. And it turns out within a uh, radius of about 16 light years, there are about 100 stars. And so at that time, they were able to measure the distance to the nearest 100 stars or so using this method, using this angle of parallax. One way in which you can kind of simulate how this method works is let's say you look at an object that is not too far away, like let's say you put your pen in front of it, and you have another object that's farther away behind it. So you, you kind of angle it right towards another bigger object behind it, and then you look at it with your left eye, and then you look at it with your right eye, and all of a sudden you see the object jump. That's the angle of parallax. So try that, try it at home. So again, put a pen like in front of a, a corner of a wall or in front of a sofa or a television or something, and look at it with your left eye, and then look at it with your right eye, and all of a sudden, bang, the, the object switches, and that's what we mean by the angle of parallax. And if you have the object closer by, the angle will be much bigger, and if the, the object is far away, the angle will be a lot smaller. And that's what we mean by the angle of parallax. So, the way the distance formula now works is that the distance in parsecs to any star is equal to 1 divided by the angle in arc seconds. So for example, if the angle in arc seconds is, um, oh, and this would be in parsecs, right? So that would be in parsecs. And I guess we write parsecs as PC. So 1 PC divided by the angle in arc seconds. And let's say for our example, the angle is 1 fifth of an arc second. That would be equal to 1 parsec divided by 1 fifth, which would be 5 parsecs. So you can see the equation is very simple after that. All you have to do is measure the angle in, in uh, arc seconds, divide that into one parsec, and you know the, the distance. So far, five parsec is roughly about 16 light years. So that was very ingenious. Once they figured that out, they finally began to be able to measure the distance of stars in arc seconds. And imagine the amazement they would have had when they began to realize, wow, these stars are trillions of miles away. Uh, so that was an absolute amazing discovery. So now they realized, wow, the planets are just in terms of millions of miles away, but wow, the stars are trillions of miles away. So they now began to realize that, wow, the universe we live in is enormous in size. Of course, back in those days, they thought the universe now was simply the galaxy we lived in. We didn't know that was a galaxy. We just thought that this was just an enormous quantity of stars out there because when they started looking at the stars with a the telescope, they saw more and more and more of them. And then they began to realize that the distance just the nearest 100 stars was in the order of 10 or 20 trillion miles away. So that was quite a discovery, but yet still very limited because now we wanted to know how far was to these other stars out there. And then we began to see nebulas out there. We want to know how far was to those nebulas. So again, the, the problem was still very daunting, but we're getting better and better at it with more and more discoveries. So on to the next tape and see what we discovered next.